also, this is Mordecai's desk. I kind of figure wood really soaks up memory, vibes, chair. I don't think I'm ready to sit there yet. In this room, and I'm kind of situating myself, and yeah, probably there's stuff here Mordecai would say, why do you save this old junk? Or maybe he'd say, oh, you found it. Oh, thank you. The passport. Um, that's very cool. Because he had a beautiful face. Cigar box, cigars, address books. Peggy Atwood and, and Graham Gibson, their, um, their cottage number is in here. I'm probably not going to dial it. Whoa, I sat there. Right now, it, it is very, very cool to touch the personal effects, etc., to be surrounded by his friends, all of these books. And I'm thinking, yeah, he was among that first generation, which put Canadian literature on the map internationally. I'm kind of in the, this middle, broadly speaking, generation. What, where can I situate myself here in this room, which is like a kind of a little matrix, legacy matrix. Am I with the boxer? Kind of, sort of. My dad was a boxer. Oh, okay, we've got, we've got Hebrew palmistry. Oh my God, we've got Canadian of the Year presented to Mordecai Richler. Not only are you one of Canada's best known and best loved writers, but you have also been among the first of a generation of writers who have helped to secure a place for Canada in the international writing community. That's true, that's the generation. I'm not sure where I am. In the world of the Mordecai Richler reading room, but I'm somewhere between and I'm never, I'm never getting out of here. It's the reading room. You'll just find me reading and I won't have plucked my eyebrows or anything else. And then you just catch me eight weeks from now, um, looking 